हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू दिस वीडियो विथ बी बेक यू माइट हैव सीन इम इन मेनी ऑफ द वीडियोज इज़ ए वेरी फेमस फिगर फॉर दिस चैनल ही अपेयर इन द एंड ऑफ एन वीकली मार्केट वीडियो एंड टूडे आई एम मीटिंग हिम अगेन इन एंड ऑफ एन सो वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट हिज एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ अप्लाइंग फॉर पी एच डी इन नैदरलैंड फ्राम इंडिया बिकॉज मेनी ऑफ यू आस्ट आई हैव मेड मेनी पी एच डी वीडियोज बट रिसेंटली आई डेंट हैव दैट मच पी एच डी वीडियो सो बी बेक हियर अप्लाइड फ्राम इंडिया डायरेक्टली पी एच डी इन नैदरलैंड सो इट विल बी वेरी यूजफुल आई गेस बिकॉज मेनी ऑफ यू कॉन्टैक्टेड मी लाइक हाउ टू अप्लाई पी एच डी फ्राम इंडिया डायरेक्टली इफ आई हैव नॉट डन माई मास्टर्स इन नैदरलैंड कैन आई गेट ए पी एच डी इन नैदरलैंड सो यू हैव सो मेनी क्वेश्चन so all these questions will be busted by vivek here and well it's not just you even i have questions like that from people actually from friends mostly they come and ask me like how do you apply for a thing so the next time somebody asks me i'll point them share to this video, video. <laughs> yeah. okay. okay so i guess you also share this video where i'm asking this in the beginning of the video normally i don't do it but. you can we can start with what is the education background of bibek where is he from and then we can move on to what he's doing now and how he applied so maybe you can start with your education background and your where are you from i'm actually from patna so you can see from the bihari accent that there was one video somebody commented yeah there was a nice comment so <laughs> yeah so i'm actually from patna but then uh, i did my usual schooling and then i uh, did engineering from uh, kanpur iit kanpur my bachelor's in material science and engineering it's not very famous department but okay. <laughs> material science and engineering you should know so and then also in my third year in kanpur you get an option to actually upgrade it to dual degree okay so i upgraded it in the third year and then i did my bachelor's and masters like together in five years okay and uh, but then uh, my masters i focused more on computational material science which is actually how i kind of got involved with physics a little bit so that was my background so far and uh, now what i'm doing is i'm working in applied physics okay because i made the transition slowly over my from a bachelor's to my oh. masters and then phd so in yeah. t wind up in t wind up and now we are in the tu and oven campus on yeah. a bench yeah so uh, how did you apply like uh, when did you decide that you are going to do a phd in which year and uh, how much time did you spend for that applying applying process and when how did you apply so what is your experience okay firstly i would also start with a small advice especially to first year students who go to college they are immediately oh i am interested in this department this is my department and i am going to enter and do this let me tell you i per- went in as a first year with a aim like i'll do mba and make money but that's not how life may <laughs> so at the end of the third year actually when i got an internship with some simulations it was a startup in india and that's where i actually uh, got introduced to simulations i enjoyed it and then when i came back in my fourth year i spoke to one of my professors he told me oh yeah he has a wonderful project for a bachelor project for this and which he can also continue as my masters so i extended my uh, bachelor's into masters working on that project it was a simulation project so that is how i actually got into this field so do not decide at the age of 16 or 17 when you are in high school oh i'm going to do all this all my life it's not going to happen like that but um that's when i decided and when i uh, got really serious like okay now i should start applying it was in uh, december uh, of my uh, uh, final year of my masters like uh, okay. in my fifth year in december i started applying so that i could have i could find something in four or five months okay. uh, by april or something then paperwork takes another two or three months and then uh, by august or september i could start that's how that was the timeline which okay. i did to Okay so did you directly apply at that time to Netherlands or you had some countries in mind or what was your thought process like yeah okay uh, basically uh, what i deal with is sli- uh, something related to quantum physics so there is a website uh, for molecular simulations quantum simulations and things like that uh, psyke.net that's it's a community there you have a lot of jobs posted like for phd's for postdocs for like research assistants for things like that all over the world all over the world yeah but that's only for molecular simulations molecular. and things like that so if you're applying in geology don't go to the mm. website so uh, but yeah you got to find a website that actually suits your needs and things like that so i 
I looked at a number of positions, some that I really liked or something like that. I applied at various positions at various places. Got some interview calls, some got I got straight rejections, but that's okay. And then, yeah, after two or three series of interviews, like I finally chose to come. I had three options at the end, but then my supervisor because I interviewed each one on Skype so I know like the person I'm talking to they judge me I judge them as well okay, okay. so my supervisor was really knowledgeable and mm. he was young dynamic so I believed yeah, it would be nice to work with him and I'm, I still enjoy it okay uh, and at that time when you were searching for position what, did you had did you have any specific universities in mind like depending on your field like okay Netherlands is good or US is good or or it was not like that it was purely based on the openings that you get in exactly. any country yeah, for me, if you are like, yeah, it, that's the difference actually in applying in the US and in uh, Europe. In US, you actually more university based. I'll apply in the university and then after I get an admit in the university, I will look for a professor. Ah, okay, yeah, but like here, a student. Yeah, exactly. But here, the difference is like, I looked at the projects. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't care about the university. I had a, a th uh, an offer from uh, UCC Ireland, University of College Cork in Ireland. Okay. But then, it's not really repeated, but the project was really nice. So, I don't, I didn't look at the university yeah I somehow looked at the guide who's gonna think like okay what is he doing if he's dynamic and what are his last few research papers and things like that so the university was not the main question but the main question was like the project and the guide that I'll be working with okay. because that's more important right? yeah uh, I think I have also said this in many videos like uh, don't go after the rankings when you're applied for the PhD better judge it based on the group that you're going to work with or the supervisor and also the project or the type of work that you'll be doing how much it suits your interest uh, yeah so one more thing like I remember that you said sometime before that you did something in France so how does that thing fit in in the middle of all these things Okay, that's an amazing question. That is what I want to add. I'll also give it as a piece of advice. What happened was, at the end of my fourth year, I had an internship opportunity in Paris, University of Paris South. And there I worked on batteries. It was not related to quantum physics or anything like that, but just the experience actually. That was actually a driving force for me because the work quality, work culture was so amazing. My supervisor was nice that I immediately decided if I get a chance, I'll work somewhere around in Europe. US is there but then I was a bit skeptical but Europe I saw the work quality I saw the um, group the bonding in the group and things like that I'm like oh, this is it would be nice to work so which is uh, that's one of the driving forces mm -hmm. and now how that helped me was actually uh, once you uh, ha you are supposed to provide letter of recommendations so once you have experience abroad at different places in different countries you can actually have letters of recommendation from different places from different countries and then that actually adds weightage to your CV mm -hmm. that, oh yeah this guy's also worked uh, in France this guy's also worked in the US and things like that rather than having everything from one institute if you can make it diverse it actually adds to your CV so yeah, that was one really big bonus I had yes I'll admit it okay so uh Maybe I will ask a fundamentally stupid question which many people ask and uh, I think it is also essential to ask for this interview. Like uh, I know like you need a CV, you need a motivation letter or a statement of purpose, I don't know what people call it and you need recommendation and what else the grades grades the of grades the masters yes. not the bachelor's uh, no also bachelor's okay. you're you're bachelor's grades are also important yes, yes. for the PhD yes, yes, okay. Yes. Okay. okay uh anything else did i miss well uh, sometimes it's just different uh, it's called sometimes it's a letter of motivation and cover letter they're okay. different okay not always but sometimes yeah, yeah. yeah and letter of recommendation you won't be providing in person as yourself it's i think the supervisors email will, right? yeah the supervisors contact. will contact themselves yeah. so you don't have you just have to uh, the provide referee. the names yes okay the referee. that's it right that's, that's pretty much it and one website which I mention always like if you are looking specifically for Netherlands just check academic transfer you'll find all the PhD positions advertised there every university they advertise there apart from advertising on their own own website uh, so find a PhD I think is find a PhD.com okay maybe I'll add that in the description below all these websites so academic transfer is specifically for mm -hmm. Netherlands and find a PhD maybe also for other countries and Euraccess.eu is also good for some Europe uh, positions apart from Netherlands. Uh, 
yeah so apart from this uh, many people ask like whether they need a english test like toefl or ilts or gre so what's your experience mm. about that okay if you are applying in the us i think gre and toefl are must in the netherlands it's not a compulsory document but it's more like yeah they sometimes ask you for a proof of uh, english proficiency like uh, ilts or TOEFL is just good enough. Uh, they're both recognized. You just got to, uh, you don't even have to like, uh, if you go and give TOEFL exam, like you have to put the names of four or five universities where they'll send it to you. You don't have to do all that thing with uh, things in the, in Europe and in the Netherlands. You can just provide them your score sheet that you got from there. So it's okay. It's not really that good. Okay. And as a whole, uh, I mean, as a whole, obviously the profile matters. But apart from that, what was your grade in the uh, masters? Uh, do you think that Uh, contributes a lot for the i mean obviously you are from iit but apart from that the grades do they matter a lot when you are applying for the phd like okay what what do you think i mean obviously you cannot know it but i will not reveal my grades here but okay let me just put it this way uh, when you are applying range bata yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll see how much i can reveal but okay when you applying uh, for a phd here what matters more than your grades yes your grades do matter sometimes but yeah you cannot apply with a 4 out of 10 or something like that it's just nonsense so try to get somewhere close to if you're somewhere close to 7 also 7.5 uh, 6.8 7.5 something like that you can still uh, you still stand a decent chance uh, and to be honest i used to am somewhere over there <laughs> okay so uh, that that's for the bachelors and for a masters i like if there's a gradual sign of improvement and things like that and most important if you have done projects that is related to the, the phd that you're going to apply for that is actually one of the biggest bonus because i remember applying for one position that actually required some machine learning and i was apart from that a little bit of machine learning skill apart from that every uh, box i had ticked mm-hmm. but then because that machine learning aspect was absent so mm, they said no we need somebody who has done project in machine learning so we, more than uh, your grades what matters is your interview and your projects that you have held actually okay and what was your experience of the interview was it like first skype or okay yeah i've had different kinds of interviews uh, in some it's uh, i had one in luxembourg the, there it was uh, like they ask you to make a presentation and then you make the presentation they ask you certain questions that is based on your master thesis or could, master project it could be your master project it could be your uh, previous internship it could be something that's related to the phd okay that thing to actually demonstrate that yes i know something in advance mm-hmm. and then they'll ask you questions and then after that they'll ask you some generic questions like yeah okay what do you think is uh, really tough for a phd what is your approach what is your goal and things like that so those are uh, general hr questions and things like that uh, and then there was one interview where they uh, from ireland where they asked me about uh, my coursework that i had done in a bit in detail okay yeah i, I see you have done this course you have this grade can you ex- briefly elaborate what you learned in this course because this can be helpful for the phd so that way okay like uh, these are the two kinds of interviews that i've had mostly mm-hmm. one i had to make presentation one i didn't really have to make presentation and what about netherlands what is your experience well in the for the netherlands i had to make the presentation and when i said i uh, how i judge my guy was from the questions that he asked me okay that were really specific and it was like even, he he had not uh, worked in that region but even then he knew exactly like what are the computational questions that he should ask so that's when i thought yeah it's going to be fun to work with him and then that was the skype interview and then did you have on campus interview no, or no 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 you don't have any on campus interview or anything like that so after skype interview you get the decision that yeah they usually take some time because they have other candidates mm-hmm. something and then they uh, yes or no you get it okay then it sounds very but, simple but then like uh, it's after the in, uh, after you get a yes or no then they ask you for the letter of recommendation sometimes sometimes they ask you before okay. sometimes after that okay yeah now let's see i think normally in netherlands i mean whatever my experience is also like normally they do it at the later stage instead yeah. of doing it at the beginning okay thank you very much vivek for giving your time you. on a weekend for out of your busy schedule of the phd <laughs> and uh, if you like this video then don't forget to smash the like button uh, share this video help each other out answer the questions of your friends like how you apply for a phd from india directly to netherlands 
and uh, subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet that motivates me and also helps you out all to reach increase the reachability of the video and see you in upcoming vlogs so don't miss the next video where we'll discuss in details about what he's doing in applied physics something related to his phd current phd so see you in the upcoming vlogs till then goodbye from eindhoven t eindhoven netherlands peace out अरे वीडियो में एडिशनल साउंड मत दो